In this video, we're going to look at how to get the value from a radio button using a simple bit of JavaScript. So I'm going to show you a couple of ways that you can actually get the value from a radio button with your JavaScript code. But just before we start, just show you what I've got actually set up in our browser at the moment. Basically, I've just got a simple form set up and there are three actual radio buttons inside there. For both of the techniques that I'm going to show you to actually work, you need to make sure that the form set up correctly which of course you'll need to do anyway to make sure that the radio buttons can only be selected once. And the key for that to work is to make sure that all of the radio button controls, the input controls that you create, have the same name attribute. So here I've actually called them all developer type because we're talking about the different types of developer that you could be. But each of the actual individual inputs themselves have a value associated with them and that's the actual attribute that we want to get hold of. It's not actually the label, it's not the actual name of the radio button itself, it's this value that we associate with it using the value attribute. So if you've come across this video because you are having problems with that, check your form first to make sure that it's actually configured with each radio button to share the same name but the value of it to have something different specific to the selection that the user is making. So over in our console, let's have a look at the first way that we can actually get the value of a radio button. And the first way is probably the more complicated way, but it does make sense from a logical point of view. And that is to get a reference to all of the radio buttons, to loop through them, and then to actually check which one has actually been selected. So we'll do that by using the document.getElementsByName selector. And I called the name attribute for my radio buttons developer type. So by selecting all of the elements with a developer type name, you can see I've got a list of all of the radio buttons. And if you look at the second one, which is actually checked at the moment, the back end one, the element actually has a property called checked, which you can see is true, which makes sense because that's the one we've selected at the moment. But if we look at one of the other elements, you can see it has a property called checked, which is set to false. So all we need to do within our loop is to actually go through all of the elements that we've selected and take a look and see if the checked property is true. And whoops, I've just got a colon there instead of a semicolon on the console.log. Okay, so when we run that code, the loop will actually go through all of those three radio input button elements. And if the checked property is true, we'll actually just log out the value of the radio button. But that could be anything else in your code. You could save that to a variable or pass it to some other part of your program. But this just shows that we can actually get the value of the radio button and do something with it inside of our loop. So let's just change to a different value and see what we get for that. So every time the user makes a different selection, if we run that JavaScript code, we can get the value that we've specified on the radio button element. So that was the long-winded complicated way. Uh, let me actually show you the simple way of doing it. So we know we need to access the value of the radio button element. And in the previous example, we had to loop through each one to find out which one was checked. But it'd be good if there was a way that you could actually zero in on the actual element that's already been checked without having to loop through all of the other radio buttons. And luckily we can do that with a CSS selector when we use our document.query selector function. If we actually pass in a CSS selector that matches any input element that has a name attribute property of developer type, we can zero in on the actual one that's been selected by using the pseudo selector of colon checked. And you should see in the output there that we've got the input element back that has the value of full stack, which is the one that's currently selected. So with our returned element, we can just access its value and we can log that to the console, save it to a variable or do anything we like with it as we did before. So there you have it, there's two different ways that you can actually access the value of a radio button using JavaScript.